Shaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Kadada Shri Vaja Tika Urava Kitabhim Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Kam Kroti Vajlam Pangam Nangvayati Gram Yat Kipata Dham Pande Shri Gram Tinatarinam Namo Vishnu Padai Krishna Vastai Bhutali Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Svamati Namani Namaste Sarasvata Dei Bhega Vaini Pacharani Epishesa Sunya Vedi Sunya Vadi Paskatai Dusatarani Narayanam Namaskityam Naram Seva Navotanam Devi Sarasvati Mbhyasam Tato Dhyam Udhyayat Nastriya Zavatya Sunityam Bhagavata Sevya Bhagavati Uttamasaki Bhakti Bhagavati Naisaki. Today we will discuss Canto 10. Lord Indra and Mother Surabi offer prayers. That we will discuss chapter 27, verses 1 to 13. Now we are right after Krishna has placed the hill down. And after that, the coward men have been astounded about Krishna's activities. And on the marriage, that uh, is fell inspired to share with them the words quoted before by Kangacharya, Kangamuni Kangacharya, and feel the identity of Krishna. Now we are moving in the final chapter of this Kavadam pastime. This chapter concludes the lifting of Kavadam Hill, and we will Indra. Apolo apologizing to Lord Krishna that um, so today we will hear in those prayers these prayers will go from the first text to text 13 that's the section we will discuss today and tomorrow we will hear about Surabi and uh, Abhish Abhishek of Krishna. So first, text one. Shri Sukha Ovacha Govardhani Trite Sile Asarat Rakshite Vrachi Golukat Avajat Krishnam Surabi Sakha Evacha. Sukadev Goswami said, after Krishna had lifted Govardhan Hill and thus protected the inhabitants of Raj from the terrible rainfall, Surabi, the mother of the cows, came from our planet to see Krishna. She was accompanied by Indra. It's an important purport here. This is are not the Surabis from the spiritual world. Purport. 
The, the word Olukat here indicates the material planet Koloka, which is filled with exceptional cows. Sarabi so went joyfully to see Lord Krishna, but Indra went fearfully. As indicated by this verse, Lord Krishna had to adopt extraordinary measures to protect his Vrindavan associates from Indra's ob ob obnoxious and offensive attack. Certainly Indra was ashamed and also nervous about his future. Having acted improperly, he had fearfully gone to seek the shelter of Lord Brahma, who then ordered him to take along Surabi from the material Goloka planet and go to see Krishna. So, he, uh, it was all on the advice of Lord Brahma. First, I will read the commentary of Vishnu Sarabhakita on this first verse. This chapter describes the prayers Indra recited out of fear. Krishna's, Krishna, Indra recited out of fear Krishna's mercy on him and how the Surabi cow and Indra performed a bathing ceremony for Krishna on account of which the Lord is called Govinda. Seeing that Raj had been protected from the rain, Indra, nervous and ashamed, he was nervous because he had tried to kill all these residents of Vrindavan and these cows, which are very dear to Krishna. That, uh, and Krishna may kill him or may remove him from his post or send him to the abode of Yamaraj. But, uh, so he's nervous and he's ashamed. He's fe fearfully, uh, he approached Krishna. The Surabi cow came on the order of Brahma to help Indra and bathe Krishna. On the order of Brahma. The word Kulukat here indicates the material planet called Koloka, which is filled with exceptional cows. Krishna's transcendental Sarabi cows from Vraj Gokul could not be met with Indra in the material world. But, uh, so Indra had not access to this Sarabi cows in, from Vraj Gokul from Vrindavan. So Indra understood the the, the power of Krishna. That, uh, so he, he understood the power of Krishna and that put him in a very insecure position. He was not sure how Krishna was going to react. After all, what he had done is horrendous. Krishna, yeah, first, of course, Krishna insulted him. And um, what was his really response to the insult? He tried to, 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 to destroy all of Raj, all Krishna's dearest beloved, including all the cows, everyone. He had a mood of retaliation due to the insult and he brought with him Surabi, an advisor of Lord Brahma. Because Krishna, the cows are very dear to Krishna. That's so uh, he wanted to, to have Krishna in, in a soft mood. <laughs> but uh, then by that, uh, he tried to avoid being punished by Krishna. Surabi, she was from a material Goloka planet. And she was very joyful because she was going to see Krishna. Text two. He 
इफिक्टा उपसंगम्या सो दे अप्रोच कृष्णा इन अ सोलिटरी प्लेस सो कृष्णा वाज अलोन बिकॉज़ अदरवाइज द सिचुएशन वुड बी वुड बी कम गासाबास फिर द पाचवासिस दैट अ वे वाज अलोन फिफ्टी सोलिटरी प्लेस दैट फ्रेडिटा He was ashamed, so that to be forgiven by Krishna, we must repent. Be ashamed of what he did. Krita Helena, having committed the offence, that first pash pasha padayo, he now he first touched Krishna's lotus feet. Chaitanya, with his health helmet, which was as fulgent, as fulgent as the sun. Translation: Indra was very ashamed of having offended the Lord. Approaching him in a solitary place, Indra fell down and lay his lay his helmet, whose effulgence was as brilliant as the sun, upon the Lord's lotus feet. Purport. The specific solitary place where Indra approached the Krishna is mentioned by the sage Sri Vai Vai Sampayan in Hari Vamsa. So there are so probably some Vai Govardhana Silatale. He saw Krishna sitting at the base of Govardhan Hill. From the commentaries of the Acharyas. We understand that Lord Krishna wanted to provide a solitary meeting for Indra, so that he would not be further humili humiliated and beg forgiveness. And and the Lord allowed him to do so privately. So, so during the time that Krishna was. Lifting over downhill, then the coward boys, the coward men, they were just simply awful about what was going on, and they had no opportunity to reflect to reflect on Krishna's position. That uh, situation was too too intense at that moment. But then, when they had the opportunity, when the event was over, and Krishna put down the hill again on the ground, they reflected and tried to understand Krishna's position. But Krishna has so many characteristics that one would not uh, that, that one would not ascribe to the which ones would. Would not ascribe to someone who is the supreme lord, but then no ordinary person in the world could could do what he has done. And what struck them especially is that he lifted an entire hill with his little little finger of his left hand. This is how they reflected on the great event, and they participated, which they of course which they participated in. Indra, on the other hand, being the perpetrator of the event, is quite feeling quite different about it. He is taken aback. He stood that he had done the wrong thing. He feels insecure, and he doesn't know how Krishna is going to react. He attempted to kill the whole of Raj, including Krishna himself. And now he wants to apologize because he's a devotee. And now the time has come that uh, he takes two again. I will read text two again before we read the comments. Indra was ashamed of having offended the Lord, approaching him in a solitary place. Indra fell down and lay his helmet. 
with their closeness with those brilliance of the sun upon the Lord's lotus feet. That, uh, the Shiva Goswami says the Vikti that uh, means a solitary place. This place is specifically mentioned in the Hari Vamsa. We heard it already. But it is a place near the Govinda Kund, a site to go for down. And Krishna, Krishna went under the pre pretext of picking flowers a little distance from his friends. That's what Shiva Goswami says. That we are. He does comment. Let's see. Okay, this is text two. This. Mm -hmm. I think this is comment of Shidashram, I think. In Ramatim, in a solitary place, since the Devatas had no arrangement for publicly appearing in Gokul, and it would be easier to ask forgiveness in private. Krishna was there alone since he went there on some pre pretext. And on seeing him come with Surabi far from far off in the sky. On the advice of Surabi that it would be better that he meet Krishna alone in a humble mood, Indra met Krishna alone without her. Another reason was that he was ashamed because he had offended the Lord by bad words and actions. He lay on the ground with his crown touching Krishna's feet. Because of splendor of his feet, Indra's crown shone like the sun. Okay. Now we will hear what Vishwanath Bhaktivedanta would say. One morning, Krishna went alone to see to what extent the lightning bolts of Indra had broken the back of Govardhan. That's another reason. Shiva Goswami said he went to pick, to pick flowers. And Vishwanath says one more morning when Krishna went alone to see to what extent the lighting balls of Indra had broken the back of Kovatan. This gave Indra an opportunity to meet Krishna in a solitary place, Vipikta. The specific solitary place where Indra approached Krishna is mentioned in Hari Vamsa, we heard here. Yeah. So Indra was sitting at the base of Kovatan Hill. Surabha had sent Indra with a suggestion, go alone with, with, without your elephant carrier and in a humble mood offer obeisances at Krishna's lotus feet to get relieved from your offense. That was the advice of Surabi. By his friends, Krishna said, O king of the demigods, I see that you have unprecedented affection for me. You have come to show mercy to me. You have offended. Who have offended you by stopping your worship? Thus Indra became much ashamed to read that. Text three. Text three. Mm -hmm. We have a commentary of Sri Das. That uh, text three. Trista Shruta Nubhavasya Krishna Syamita Tejasa Nasta Tridokesha Mada Idam Aha Kitanjali Indra had now heard of, of, he had heard of and seen the transcendental power of omnipotent Krishna and his false pride in being the Lord of the three worlds was thus defeated. Holding his hands together in supplication, he addressed the Lord as follows. 
So now we will start to speak. But before we hear Sridhar Swami's comment, that Indra is now seeing that about which he only heard previously. His intoxication, I'm the Lord of the Three Worlds, was destroyed and very powerful. He had heard of Krishna's supreme power. And Krishna, Krishna has shown it to him. Now he realized his mistake without Krishna saying any word. So, therefore, Indra, later, as Srila Prabhupada explained in Krishna book, you are the greatest teacher because you taught in such a way that allowed me to come to my realization. So, when we realize something on our own, then it sticks. That, uh, that, uh, that is important. That... Uh, and these realizations are so important that uh, getting rid of our anathas goes hand in hand with realizations. But, uh, so, he, of course, Brahma advised uh, Indra because, of course, in Chapter 14, we heard how Brahma had also experience of being humiliated, humiliated by Krishna. So, so he had also realization and, and therefore instructed um, Indra. So, text 3, shortcoming by Vishwanath Prakritaku. First, with his own eyes, Indra saw the powers of Krishna, having understood his offense and designed to alleviate it. Indra went to Mount Meru, Meru, where he heard about Krishna's powers from Lord Brahma. We went to Mount Meru, not to Brahma Lokan. Interesting. Good text four. Now, four to thirteen are uh, Indra's prayers. Oh. In thou vacha vishu tasatvam tapadam asantam tapo mayam dust parajastamaskam mayo maya mayo yam guna pra sam pravaho na vichate te kahana no banda. Kinder said, Your transcendental form, a manifestation of your goodness. It's undisturbed by change, shining with knowledge and the void of passion and ignorance. In you does not exist the mighty flow of the most of material nature, which is based on illusion and ignorance. Hmm. So Lord Krishna's form is not like ours. It is undisturbed by change, nothing in this world can hurt it. Lord Krishna is not in illusion as he is not identifying with the illusory body as we do because his body is transcendental. There is no difference between his spiritual body and himself. He is everything. That in a few chapters from now, two chapters from now, Krishna is going to dance with the gopis. It is therefore important that, that he that we have, that this is fixed in our mind, how Krishna and Krishna's body is different. But, uh, so, Sri Vashkanasya Parakitaka comments on this verse, that, uh, mm -hmm. you know that I was so foolish that I stopped your worship and on the pretext of worshiping Govardhan, I enjoyed office of arrangement for you. Being such words from Krishna, Indra said, O oh Lord, 
though I am bewildered by your Maya, and I now know a little about you by speck of your mercy. This is the intention of this in the next verse. Kinder said, your transcendental form is undisturbed and ever peaceful, Santa. It is full of knowledge, Tapo Mayan. Oh, it is full of pure knowledge. Does it arise from Sattva Guna? No. Your, fo your form is Visuddha Sattva, transcendental goodness. Sit Ananda Maya. Therefore, we are totally free from the modes of passion and ignorance. Rajya, Tamaguna. Moreover, people can destroy the effects of passion and ignorance, trust for Rajya, Tamaskam, simply by remembering your beautiful, transcendental form. Though you are not the least bit influenced by the modes of nature, like the conditions so sometimes for amusement, you accept the ro a role in this world. No, it is not a fault because you have no desire to accept any relation with the material realm. But, uh, so, it's first glorifying Krishna, and then he will ask what he wants. That um, so takes five. But um, text four, I will read some parts of the purpose of text four before. The great Bhagavatam commentator Srila Siddhar Swami has masterfully explained the Sanskrit elements of this profound verse. The word dham has several meanings, dwelling place, house, abode, and, and so on. Or a favorite thing, or, or person, delight, or pleasure, but also form or appearance, power, strength, majesty, glory, splendor, or light. That, uh, sorry. That, uh, concerning the first set of meanings, the Vedanta Sutra states that the absolute truth is the source and resting place of all existence. And in the first verse of the Bhagavatam, that absolute truth is said to be Krishna. Although Lord Krishna exists in his own dharm or abode, called Krishna Loka, he himself is the abode of all existence, as Arjun confirms in Bhagavad Gita, where he addresses Krishna's param dharm, the supreme abode. The very name Krishna indicates the all attractive person, the source of all beauty, the pleasure, is the favorite thing or person, delight and pleasure. Ultimately, these terms can refer only to Krishna. Dharma also refers to form of, of appearance. And as Indra offered these prayers, he was in fact directly seeing the form of Krishna before him. As clearly explained in Padiklita, so Lord Krishna's power, strength, majesty, splendor and effulgence are all contained within his transcendental body and thus attest to the infinite glories of the Lord. Now, Shema Swami has brilliantly summarized all these meanings of the word Dham by giving the Sanskrit term Svarup as a synonym. Svarup, the Lord's form, spiritual form. The, the word Svarup means one, one's own form or shape and also one's own condition, character or nature. Since Lord Krishna being put your spirit is non-different from his body. There is absolutely no difference between the Lord and his visible form. By contract in this material world, the conditioned souls are all distinctly different from our bodies. Whether those bodies be male, female, black, white, or whatever, all of us are eternal souls. 
different from our temporary MC bodies. When the words Farub is applied to us, it is especially indicates our own spiritual form, because our form is in fact our own condition, character, and own nature eternally. So we need to identify with this form, our own form, that uh, to understand this Asadila. That uh, thus the liberated condition in which one's outward form is one's deepest spiritual nature is called Svarup. Primarily, uh, however, this term refers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna. This all indic is indicated in this verse by the word Tavadam, as explained by Sridhar Swami. Sridhar Swami has explained that here the word Santam means always in the same form. Santam can also mean undisturbed, free from passion or purified. According to Vedic philosophy, all change in the world is caused by the influence of passion and ignorance. The passionate mode is creative and the ignorant mode is destructive, whereas the mode of goodness, sattva, is serene and sustaining. In many ways, this verse emphasizes that Lord Krishna is free from the modes. The word Vishuddha, Satam, Santam, Vajspa, Vajas, Tamaskam, and Guna, Pravaho, Navityate, they all indicate this. Unlike Krishna, we change one body for another because of our involvement with the modes of nature. The various transformations of material forms are impelled by the modes of nature, which are themselves set in motion by the influence of time. Therefore, one who is free from material modes of nature is changeless and eternally satisfied in blissful spiritual existence. This word Santam indicates that the Lord is undisturbed by change since he is free from the material modes. According to this verse, the powerful flow of material modes of nature, namely passion, stupidity and mundane piety are based on Agrahan which Shilad Shiddhar Swami has translated as ignorance. Since the Sanskrit root Gra means to take, accept, grasp or comprehend, Krana means exactly in the sense to grasp an idea or a fact. The word Agrahana here means one's failure to understand one's spiritual position. And this failure causes to fall into the violent currents of material existence. So that uh, then an additional meaning of the word Agrahana is derived when it is divided into the compound Agra and Hana. Agra means the first, top or best, and Hana means killing. The best part of our existence is the supreme, is, this, is the pure soul, which is eternal. In, con in con contradistinction to the, the, the temporary material body and mind. This one who chooses material existence over Krishna consciousness is in fact killing the best part of himself, the soul, which in its pure state can enjoy Krishna consciousness unlimitedly be heard in the she is upon his head, Atmaha, killer of the soul. Srila Siddhar Swami has translated Tapoma, I am full of knowledge. That the word Tapas generally indicates austerity, is derived from the Sanskrit verb Tap, whose meaning can be summarized as indicating the various functions of the sun. Tap means to burn, to shine, to heat, and so on. The Supreme Lord is eternally perfect, and therefore here. Tapo Mayam does not indicate that his transcendental body is meant for austerities. Since austerities are performed by the conditioned souls to purify themselves or to acquire a particular form, an omnipotent, perfect being neither purifies himself nor acquires powers. He is eternally pure and all powerful. Therefore, Siddhar Swami has intelligently understood 
that in this case, the word tapas refers to il the illuminating function of the sun and thus indicates about self evolution body is omnisign. It's quite uh, uh, also amazing how Shidakshvami comes to that conclusion. Light is a common symbol of knowledge. <clears throat> the Lord's spiritual effulgence that does not merely eliminate phys physically, as in the case of a candle or light bulb. More importantly, the Lord's body illuminates our consciousness with perfect knowledge, because the Lord's effulgence in, in it is in, in itself perfect knowledge. We offer our respectful obeisance to the Lotus Feet of Srila Swami and thank him for his enlightening comment on this first. So now text five. Kuto nota de tavaisha tat chita lo bada yo ye buddha linga bava tata pitandam bhagavan vibhakti damasya kutjai how then could there, ex there exist in you the symptoms of an ignorant person, such as greed, lust, anger, and envy, which are produced by one's previous involvement in material existence, and which cause one to further entang ent entangled in material existence? And yet, as a Supreme Lord, you impose punishment to protect the religious principle. And kept down the wicked. That um, kept down the wicked. So we'll read part of this purport also. So those things exist in us, but Krishna is touched, not touched by it. We are here because of the mode of material nature, but Krishna is not. Then why is he here? But, uh, so we will first read Srila Vishwanathika Bhakti Taku's comments, text five, short. Indra said, O oh Lord, if you have no desire to accept the modes of nature, how do their, their effects, such as greed and anger, appear within you? That, uh, how could you stop my worship without, without the influence of the modes of nature? And without showing greed and anger, how could you punish the wicked to protect the principles of religion? So that the questions that Indra is posing that uh, so could there exist in you the symptoms of an ignorant person that uh, could let's hear from Shita Swami see if I can Get the text on the screen. Text uh, five. Mm -hmm. Yes, to go to the chapter. To the correct chapter first. Chapter. Twenty seven. Text five. Yeah. I will also read his translation of this verse. He says, O controlling Lord, where is the fault since you are the cause of Maya? The greed and other qualities are created by you. 
Lord punishes in order to protect Dharma and ch chastise the victim. Since you are an ocean of good qualities and the void of faults, you and your devotees have no greed and other bad qualities. This is expressed by Kaimutya, the word Kaimutya. O oh Lord, control of Maya, greed and other qualities are created by you. Greed is especially meant, mentioned because it was a cause of happiness for the devotees and grief for others of the worship of Govinda. Sikh Suksha approves of the version with Esha Manu Lobadayo. Therefore, greed is permissible in unintelligent persons like us who are not servants. Though greed does not exist in you and your servants, servants, it exists in us. You carry out punishment because you are Bhagavan having appeared to benefit the world. You are directly the Supreme Lord, or Bhagavan carries out punishment. Indra does not directly address the Lord as you, out of fear and respect. It's uh, not an easy verse to understand, therefore we will read uh, some parts of the purport the complex philosophical statements, and it is quite complex, that may be analyzed as follows. Let's try to understand it. In the first line of the verse, Indra refers to the main idea expressed at, at the end of the previous verse, namely that the great currents of material existence, which are based on ignorance, cannot possibly exist within the Supreme Lord. So, so we, we become conditioned, so become greedy and angry, but these faults do not exist in Krishna. The words tat dev detava and tat krita indicate that something causes the modes of nature to manifest. So, so, it's, so we become greedy, we become angry because of the influence of the modes. And who controls these modes? That's the point here. Well, some, something causes the modes of nature to manifest. And that they in turn, that they in turn become the cause of that which, which caused them. That, uh, the second line, but uh, of this verse, we find that it is material feelings such as greed, lust, envy, and anger that causes the modes of nature to manifest, and that are themselves caused by the modes. So it's, it's material that you know, we become angry, and then we, we, by that we are contact, contacting the mode of passion, and, 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 and then we have the influence of the mode of passion on us. That, um, yeah. So the explanation of this seeming paradox is as follows. Now we will hear a deeper explanation. When the conditioned soul decides to associate with the material qualities, it becomes contaminated by those qualities. Of course, by Vajita, Karanam, Gunasangrasya, Sata Satyoni Janmasu. Association with the material nature. And we rot rotate in, bir in birth, death, birth, and so on. For example, in the presence of a seductive woman, a man may give in to his lower instincts and try to enjoy sex with her by deciding to associate with the lower qualities of nature, those qualities manifest in him very powerful, is overwhelmed with lust and driven to try again and again to satisfy his burning desire. Because his mind has been affected by lust, all that he does, thinks and speaks will be influenced by his strong attachment to sex. 
In other words, by choosing to associate with, with the lusty qualities of nature, he has caused them to powerfully manifest within himself. And eventually, those lusty qualities themselves will cause to accept another material body suitable for affairs covered by the modes. Coming in life in a cycle, I can't go out of it. The lower qualities, such as lust, greed, and envy, are a Buddha Linga Baba symptoms of ignorance. Indeed, as indicated by Srila Siddhar Swami, in his commentary, the manifestation of the modes of nature is synonymous with the manifestation of a, part of, of a particular material body. That, uh, mm -hmm. of a little further, an ignorant bystander may have simplistically interpreted Krishna's pastime of lifting cover, cover down the as follows. The residents of Vrindavan were obliged by the Vedic principles to make certain offerings to the God of Heaven, Indra. Child Krishna, ignoring the position of Indra, preserved these offerings and took them for his own pleasure. When Indra tried to punish Krishna and his associates, the Lord, the Lord frustrated Indra's attempt, humili humili humiliated him and exhausted his pride and resources. So that is a wrong understanding. Therefore, this said, but this superficial interpretation is refuted in this verse. Here Lord Indra addresses Sri Krishna's Bhagavan, indicating that he is not an ordinary child, but in fact God. Therefore, Krishna's punishing Indra was part of his mission of protecting religious principles and curbing down the envious. It was not a display of material anger or of greed for the offering meant for Indra. Sri Krishna is pure spiritual existence and his simple, sublime desire is to engage all living beings in the perfect, blissful life of Krishna consciousness. Krishna's desire to make us Krishna conscious is not egoistical, since ultimately Krishna is everything and Krishna consciousness is objective, object, objectively the best consciousness, Lord Krishna is really the humble servant of Krishna. A fact is now beginning to remember. Text 6. Pita gostvam jagatam madisho duracaya kalo pantadandra itaya cecha tanubi samyase you are the father and spiritual master of this entire universe and also its supreme controller. You are insurmountable time imposing punishment upon the sinful for their own benefit. Indeed, in various incarnations selected by your own free will, you acted this decisively to remove the false pride of those who presume themselves Masters, the purport. The word Ita is significant here. Lord Krishna protects religion and chastises the victim for the benefit of the entire universe. Foolish and faithless pseudo priest criticize God for punishing the living entities through the actions of nature. But whether Lord Krishna punishes them indirectly through nature and indirectly in his incarnations, as mentioned here, he has a perfect right to do so because he is the father, spiritual master, and supreme ruler of the entire universe. Another way to curb down the false attempts of the conditions so to establish the kingdom of God without God is through his features in Sirbaum Mount all time. It is said, spare the rod and spoil the child. That is a fact, and it is actually the Lord's mercy that it takes the trouble to rectify our misbehavior, although faithless persons criticize the Lord's fatherly, fatherly vigilance. That is from a Sri text 6. Indra said, as a supreme Lord, you are complete. So what purpose? Do you have in protecting dharma by punishing the evil? It is for the auspiciousness of the universe. 
due to your merciful nature, you show affection to those who follow Dharma, just as the father favors his son and the guru his disciple. As Adisha, as Adisha, supreme controller, you are fully capable of delivering everything from suffering and bestow happiness. But for the evil people, you are insurmountable time which purifies them to punishment. To benefit both the pious and impious, you appear in pious incarnation and perform pastimes according to your free will, each satan be. Your pastimes include killing demons like Bhutan and protecting the devotees. It is also your pastime to deflate the pride of your devotees, such as Brahma, who become intoxicated with the minded power delegated to them. So that's a beautiful realization. I think Sridhar Swami has com comment on this first. If we can get it here. Yes, text. Seven. You have acted for my benefit. Cha means you're yourself. Or cha means just. You perform various pastimes in your body just for the benefit of the world. You remove the pride of those who think they are rulers. Yadisa manina, such as me. O oh, oh Lord of the universe, Charadis, you remove the pride, manam, of proud persons, maninam, since there is no benefit for the world uh, if it, its protectors have pride. O oh, Cha means older. Though you destroy pride, you act for their benefit. Or, or, or though you give punishments, you produce benefit. Though you enact punishments, Upata does so, you are the father in goal. Just as a father gives punishment for the child's benefit, or the goal for the disciple's benefit, or the, or the master's servant for for the servant's benefit, or Yama gives benefit to all jivas, so you give punishment for benefit. By experience of hellish punishments, the jivas are cleansed of sin. That is clear in the story of Ajamel. Or times, or time gives punishment with birth and death, and gives benefit by producing detachment. Fathers and others can cheat, but time does not. It is difficult to surpass the Ratshaya. You act through the avatars who appear by the desire of your devotees. It shall down be that. Uh, text seven. That uh, seven. Ye mat vidahya jagati samaninas Vambiksha kale vayamasutam madam Itvaya maryam prabayantya pasmaya Ita kalanam apite nusasanam Even fools like me who proudly think themselves universal lords quickly give up their conceit and directly take to the path of spiritual of the spiritual progressive when they see you are, are fearless in the face of time. Thus you punish the mischievous only to instruct them. So in I saying your punishment punishment is for the benefit of everyone. That uh, that here it says it's to instruct them that uh, even fools like me. So 
we are all fools because we, are, we have accepted this material body and acted against or rebelled against Krishna trying to take his position. That's quite foolish. But uh, that's a great bewildering. And we are all guilty of that foolishness. So feeling repentant, maybe not enough, but we based on knowledge, understanding our own foolishness, that uh, the purport is seven, that uh, I will first read Shida Swami's comment. That uh, on text seven. I perform activities for the pleasure of my devotees, not to break the pride of people like you. That is true. Our pride will be broken by itself. At some time, Kali is seeing you directly as fear or as being fearless, the ignorant worship you with prema, prabhajanti. This is the benefit, not only by words, but by action, isha, iya. These persons stay become a lesson for the wicked. Oh, in your activities, such as govardhan, lifting govardhan, is a lesson even for the wicked, like me. Seven. Among those who think themselves lords, I am the lowest. Indra speaks in this mood. But Vita here indicates that Indra is the most foolish of the foolish. The comparison, not Vida, like me, indicates the extreme. And in the example of a face as beautiful as the moon, the moon indicates most beautiful. In that continued, seeing that you are fearless in the face of time, I give my false identity, I give up my false identity as, as a controller. What the meaning can be, not knowing what kind of punishment I will get, I give up falsely my identity out of fear of you, giving up our pride upon us, Abbasmaya, we fully take to Prabhajanti the path Aryamach of your devotees. Therefore, this passing of lifting over down is your punishment for me. That's in this conclusion. That has been my punishment this whole pastime. So no need to punish me further. I, I get over. I got my punishment already. That, that, uh, that's my text. And, uh, yeah, text seven. Yeah, the purport that uh, history is filled with examples of the supreme authority breaking conceit of foolish men. Then Srila Prabhupada speaks about the modern world and the foolishness of materialistic people, leaders. But uh, at the end he said, modern man should not simply make himself a lesson of nature by falling down from his proud position, rather he should submissively execute the will of the all attractive personality of God. The absolute truth, see Krishna, and, and, and usher in a new area of sanity, tranquility, and widespread enlightenment would be good. But today we see no pose in that field. Text eight. Satam Satam Mama Isvaya Satam Mama Isvaya Mada Plutasya Kita Gasaste Vidusa Prabhava Shantum Prabhuta Simuda Shita So My Vam Punabun Materishami Sati Engrossed in pride over my ruling power. 
ignorant of our, of, our, of your majesty, I offended you. O oh Lord, may you forgive me. My intelligence was bewildered, but let my consciousness never again be so impure. Uh, things I, I don't want to be again in that position, in that mood of being the controller. So he's begging for forgiveness. So there is the element here. I was a fool, but uh, and uh, please forgive me that I mean and help me to never come again in such a an offensive consciousness. So that uh, so these are all. This was a situation of the heart, and we can can learn from it. But um, yes, can carry the purport of it. Although Lord Krishna protected the residents of Braj by lifting Govardhan Hill, he had not yet punished Indra himself, and Indra feared that at any moment Sri Krishna might call the son of Bhivashva and Yamaraj to punish impudent, impudent persons who defy the laws of God. Indra was quite fearful and thus begged the Lord's forgiveness on the plea that he could be purified only by Krishna's mercy and that he was too stubborn to learn a good lesson to mere punishment. In fact, despite Indra's humility in this case, his heart was not completely purified. How do we know that? When you are fearful, it's not completely purified. Still identification with the body. Later on in this canto, we find that when Lord Krishna once took a Parijata flower from Indra's kingdom, poor Indra again reacted violently against the Supreme Personality of God. Thus, we should aspire to go back to our eternal home in the kingdom of Krishna, should not become entangled in the imperfect life of, this, of the material gods. It's mentioned here in the purport. So, the Vishvanacharvartika, column 7. Krishna might have replied, I lifted Govardhan Hill to protect Vraj, not to punish you. Now I will call Yamaraj and arrange for your punishment. Afraid of such a reply, Indra fearfully said, as the most famous father and guru, you are most merciful by nature. Therefore, please forgive the offense of these foolish persons emerged in pride and ignorance, avidusha of your ma ma majesty. You should not purif purify me by punishment because I'm like a stubborn animal. The moment after the master beats the animal, it again commits the same offense. Instead, you should purify me by your mercy, so that my animalistic tendencies do not arise again. This prayer is not offered with a complete pure heart, because Krishna is exhibiting humility. Indra is exhibiting humility in order to save himself. That's another reason. He's not pure. He has a motive. He wants to save himself. Indra mentions this in the seventh verse. Later in the tenth canto, we find that when Krishna once took the Parijata flow from heaven, foolish Indra again reacted violently against the Lord. He will do it again. What do you think? Or what do you think of if you hear all prayers like this? Text nine. Tava Vataro Yamadok Saya Saya Uva Paranam Muruba Rajan Manam Samu Patinam Abavaya Deva Bavaya Yusmas Sharanan Vartinam. You descend in this world to destroy the warlords who burden the earth and create terrible disturbances. That uh, 
O Lord, you simultaneously act for the welfare of those who faithfully serve your lotus feet. So, you know, he's saying, uh, I, I'm a devotee, I'm not an Asura. So, treat me different on these Asuras. But uh, this is offering prayers. He's offering prayers and Krishna is not saying anything. Like with Brahma, he did, he did not say anything. So this first utilizes an attractive poetic device and so on. Yeah. But, uh, further. Certainly Indra hoped that Lord Krishna would count him among the devotees and not to the demons. Not the demons, all the considering in those actions one may doubt where his loyalty actually lays. That uh, Indra was aware of this possible doubt and thus we find in the next verse, he tried his best to surrender to the Supreme Lord. So, Indra said, we have appeared in this world for our benefit because, because our, of our prayers. Even knowing this, I've been blind and acted foolishly. Now, having been punished, I can see the truth. You destroy, you descend to destroy the demoniac warlords who arouse the earth and to bring prosperity to those who faithfully serve your lotus feet. But I'm neither of these. So you neither destroy me, nor bless me. Alas, it is my great misfortune that you that you remain neutral towards me. So this is not saying anything. No, text 10, 11. 10, 11. Obeisant to you, the Supreme Personality of God, the great soul, who are all, uh, all pervading and will reside in the hearts of all. Now, based on to you, Krishna, the chief of the Yadu dynasty. And to him who assumes transcendental bodies according to the desires of his devotees, and, and to him whose form is itself pure consciousness, and to, and to him who is everything, who is the seat of everything, who is the soul of all creatures, I offer my obeisances. So here, that uh, is clearly understanding Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But we could hardly construe from the first line of this verse that God is somehow, somehow impersonal, but assumes a personal material body. It is clearly said here that the Lord assumes different forms according to his fachanda, according to his own desire, or according to the desires of his devotees. An impersonal God could hardly reciprocate to the personal desires of his devotees, nor could an impersonal God itself have desires, since desires, desire is characteristic of personality. Therefore, the Lord's manifesting different forms in a personal way, responding to personal desires indicates that he's eternally a person and, and manifests his different transcendental bodies as an expression of his own eternal nature. To the word Visuddha, Gyan Mukta is most significant. Mukti means the form of the deity. And it is specifically stated here that the Lord's form in itself is complete pure consciousness. Consciousness is a primary spiritual element distinct from any any of the material elements and even distinct from the subtle or psychological material elements mundane mind intelligence and false ego which are simply a psych psychic covering over pure consciousness since the lord's form is made of pure consciousness it can hardly be understood as a material body like the mortal bags of flesh and bones we carry around in this world the last two lines of this verse, there is poetic emphasis on the word sarva, everything. The Lord is everything. He's, in, he's the seed of everything. He's the soul of every creature. Therefore, let us join with Indra in offering our basis to the Lord. That, uh, so, now we will read. 
commentaries of Vishwanathan, these two verses, that's verse 10 and 11. Indra said, therefore let me just surrender to your lotus feet and offer your respect. This is expressed in two verses. Udav says, Krishna, the primeval Lord and Master of Matter and Spirit appeared in this world in different avatars as portions of Mount Vishnu, who is also his part. Therefore, in this verse, Inda pays respect to all the expanded forms of, which are within Krishna. When he appears on earth, I pay my respects to Lord Narayan, Parvati, or Mahavaikuntha. Pay my respect to Mahavishnu Purusaya, creator of the Mahatattva. I pay my respect to Gabbadaka Shari Vishnu, the super soul of the total universe, Shamasti Paramatma Mahatmane. After paying respects to the plenary portions of Krishna, Amsa, Indra, pay respects to the, to the Amsi, the source of the Amsas. I offer my respect to Vasudev, the son of Vasudev. I offer my respect to Krishna, the Lord of the Yadu dynasty, Satvatas, where he has understood Krishna's identity. Indra said, I pay respects to you who accept bodies in order to give a happiness to your prema bhaktas who serve you in the sacred raptures of Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Sringar. Being non material, your transcendental body is completely pure consciousness without the tinge of illusion. You possess unlimited multifarious energies, such as Mamaya, you are everything, Sarva, you are the seed, Sarva Bija, and everything and the soul of every creature. Does that pay respect to you? Text 12. Now we come to the point of the confession. That's part of uh, asking forgiveness, the confession part. Ayedam Bhagavan Prosta Nasaya Sarabhaya Vishis Titam Vyate Shakne Mani Nati Faman Yuna My dear Lord, when my sacrifice was disrupted, I became fiercely angry full of false pride as I try to destroy your, your coward community with severe rain and wind. So say, mea culpa, the fault lies in me. That's important to come to that conclusion that the fault lies in me. That uh, O oh, Indra, I can understand from your recitation of praises, praises that you are my devotee, but without your sanction, without your, without your sanctions, the big Vartaka clouds attacked my brats, therefore you should punish them. Fearing such an innocent scolding from in Christ, Krishna, Indra thought, Alas, I cannot be the duplicitous with the all knowing super soul. Therefore, in this verse, Indra decided to confess that everything was his fault. Krishna and Indra might have the following conversation Krishna, but Indra, how is it possible for my devotee to do this? Indra replied, I became angry when my worship was stopped. Krishna, though I am your master and I stopped your worship, I cannot believe that my servant would do such a thing. Indra replied, anything is possible for one who is falsely proud, Manina. Krishna, Thou pride may sometimes arrive in my devotee, he will remove it with intelligence, Indra. But in intense anger, it tipra man, you know, it destroys all one's intelligence. That uh, last text today, 13. 
Oh, my Lord, you have shown mercy to me by shutting my false pride and defeating my attempt to punish Vindavan. To you, the Supreme Lord, Spiritual Master and Supreme Soul, I have come for shelter. Indra said, Though I have caused great disturbance to Vraj, I have received your mercy like a sick person being diagnosed and given medicine by a doctor. Thus cured of my disease, I have given up the urge to release my, my lightning bolts because you control everything. You are the Supreme Lord Ishvaram because you give benefit to everyone. You are the spiritual master Guru because you are the supreme object of love. You are the supreme soul. Heart So by hearing these prayers, we can understand Krishna's position and our position. So, this process of asking for forgiveness is very important for all of us. Any comments? Maharaj, uh, I find it very fascinating how forgiving and tolerant Krishna is. You know, even after Indra tried to clear, kill all his associates and probably tried to kill Krishna himself. But he's still willing to not humiliate him and to grant him audience and forgive him. So it's quite amazing to see that. Yeah, we will hear on Monday Krishna's reply. But um, of course, Indra was his devotee, but a bit bewildered that. Uh, Devotees, we may also become a villain. Number 12, Pat Priya, please. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering uh, because the commentators seem to be saying that Indra's prayers are just um, superficial, that he's not really, um, he's just trying to save his own neck, you know, so he doesn't get a worse punishment. Uh, but could it be also that? Yeah, and, and they give the proof of that, that later he's, he, when Krishna goes to take the Parijata tree, then there's a fight. Um, so obviously he didn't really realize that Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Um, but I was wondering, could it be that Indra is sincere in the moment, but then uh, later he becomes covered? You know, because sometimes that happens to us also. We'll, we'll have a we'll be having some difficulty or whatever and then we have a realization we're like okay i understand i accept this is krishna's mercy everything's good but then later uh we remember you know in thinking about it in a different state of consciousness we again become disturbed what's going on we become angry and whatever frustrated so um could it be just that or do you understand what i'm the distinction that I'm trying to make. Yeah. Well, my comment would be that Indra is not completely sincere. What's complete sincerity? Complete sincerity is understanding. Understanding that Krishna is the owner of everything and we are meant for his pleasure. But he's still thinking about his own benefit. So it's subtle, but this, in these prayers, like our Acharyas point out, he wants to save himself. He has a purpose here. He has a clear purpose to save himself. But that goes together with the nature of demigods in this world. 
Most of them are sakkan bhaktas. They are not pure devotees. Hell sakkan bhaktas. Their material desires, it's, it's performing devotion service with material desires, but their desires are not like the people in this world. They are subtle, subtle. But he's one of the biggest controllers in this universe. Can you control without passion? It's difficult. But uh, it can be done in goodness, but, but controlling means management, means passion. And not really, he deals with this energy. He becomes overwhelmed by them again because he is not a pure devotee. And that's the, which an issue. But Krishna know, knows that. Krishna knows Indra is my devotee, but he has this desire to control. And therefore, he has got this position being like we have the Bali Maharaj story. Those Bali Maharaj. He will become the Indra in the next, the next month of time. That, uh, and his name, yeah, yeah. So, so Krishna fulfilled also his desires. Although in Bali Mahaj desired it, but he, he why desired it? to serve Krishna. So that same thing is a bit there, that Krishna reciprocates with it without desires. So that is Purandar, that is his name of Indra. He has his desire. And he does not want to give it up. He want, he want, he want, he likes his service and he is he's attached to it. He does not want to give it up. And, and, and he doesn't want to be punished either. But Krishna knows this Purandar, although he, he has done so much service, he became bewildered, but he has done so much service. And therefore, we'll see, he will not push, punish him as Indra expected him to do, or feared to do, that uh, he was still his servant. He wanted just to take away his pride. Raj, I have another doubt because, um, okay, like you're saying, uh, Indra understands that he's, not, uh, Krishna sees that Indra is not totally pure, although he's his devotee, and Indra also admits that. But then he asks him, you know, let my consciousness, uh, please um, purify me so that my, my consciousness doesn't again become bewildered like this. So then why doesn't Krishna purify him? Seems like he's ser sincerely asking for help. Like, please take away yeah. my pride, take away my ignorance. But then Krishna just lets him stay with his material desires. This is two sides. Two sides always. We must desire to become pure. And that's the sincerity. And Krishna reciprocates with that. So he's not going to act against the desire of, um, of Indra. Although he's asking for purification. He does not really want to give it up. He wants to save himself. The surrender is not 100%. And Krishna says that he reciprocates without surrender. But uh, that is at least one, one reason I could see why it is not happening. We can also pray to Krishna, please purify 
גם פרי גדולות נפסים על ידי פנא מסתי עשייה ויבי בבא ועצנא גבות סודם סכמה סיום רנדאי רנדאי את עמוד עשה רזה בימה ואמרת מי בריס יום שלום. Take the desires from our heart, take it away. And we pray like that, but desire is also a kind of prayer. If we desire still to enjoy, it's also a kind of prayer. And Krishna takes that into account. There the point of sincerity comes in. Surrender means give it all up. And when we say to Krishna, yes, purify me, take it all away, but not yet now. I don't want you, not yet now, but that, and, and that's, that's fighting. But, uh, so yes, that's what I could say on that, if that makes sense. Krishna doesn't take away his, um, he doesn't purify his consciousness because Indra's prayers are basically just, as they say, from the lips and not from the heart. It, it, it can be purified for some time, but, 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 but because the desire is there, it covers him again, he forgets it. But, uh, yeah, that is another way to see on it, that... Uh, because for some time we will not do it. But then later, in the Dvarka pastime, which is, which is many years later, that these are still the Vrindavan time, pastime. Many years later, not for the demigods, it's going quicker. But, no. Interesting. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Um, Purnamasi, Mother Purnamasi, please. We like to hear from you. Hare Krishna. Uh, I think in this way, although Indra was angry, uh, at, but he was all the time, he did a lot of harm to Brajwasi. He all the time was Krishna consciousness. And uh, I feel that is very difficult to achieve. Either in a material or a, a life or otherwise. And uh, he helped Krishna to perform his pastime of lifting the Govardhan hill, uh, which in return, uh, Brajwasis and uh, all the gopis enjoyed that. And uh, up to date, we enjoy uh, the pastime of Krishna lifting the hill. I think in that way, he being so much Krishna consciousness, he purified himself, although he asked for the forgiveness. But once one is Krishna consciousness in any way, is itself purifying. Yeah. That's what I think. Because otherwise we go to the other world where we don't think of Krishna and we can easily lead to hell, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure, surely, because he, he was fixing our mind on Krishna. It must be purified. I was thinking yeah. also when you were speaking about another aspect, Krishna wanted this this Govardhan pastime to take place to teach us. So and he, he, he had to perform his pastime. Yeah. Uh, and that is a vital thing as well. Otherwise, how would Krishna perform the pastime? And that itself is purifying. Uh, although Krishna might have purified him at the end, but uh, it, I feel that is really wonderful that how this pastime is done. Yeah. Yeah, we see like that. Srila Prabhupada said we should discuss his books from different angles of view, and, and that's certainly also a valid angle. Thank you, Dr. Ramakrishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 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 Yes, Maharaj, uh, after listening your today's explanation and uh, how Mataji asked the question and your reply about Indra and his desire, uh, everything looks very 
very uh, challenging now again you know because the slightest desires and the desires are not in our control and how it comes suddenly i don't know how it comes so it's so challenging it's so difficult actually it is a big uh, big task big uh, you know uh, as you said that the desire itself is a uh, prayer so and these desires are not in the control we don't want but it comes suddenly it comes where from it comes uh, no idea so it's a big challenge the whole thing looks very uh, little uh, discouraging because yeah. uh, yes. thank you maraj yeah I, i must say that the desire is a prayer but uh, desires come up in our mind also not real desires which are not ours but we have like when we have a good sadhana then we can say to these desires i'm not going to fulfill them that uh, and that that will help us fully and that's part of the post of vanastani vritti neglecting these desires and then they go away so but we have so many in our heart and it takes a while therefore this hearing of the bhagavatam is purifying we have all heard today the bhagavatam and it will be very much purifying all of us that uh, every time we hear we get some purification thank you mashing up uh chaitanya prema prabhu hari krishna thank you mahesh um Chaitanya Prima, we, we, we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you, the, the connection. Um, that, that, uh, so, so, so we will... So, Chaitanya Prima... Yeah, the, co- the connection is too bad. Uh, but, okay, we, we will try to hear from Tribhuvana Prabhu. Hopefully this connection is better. Very question. Maharaj, please ask that Maharaj. My basis. In this test, I see some, yeah, I test look like uh, uh, a similar, you know, I was, that we perceive in the, the, the Kaliya Lila, because one who has Indra acts like this, he has acted like this because it's my, and a similar, you know, idea was raised by the, you know, by Kaliya's wife, that who has given this, uh, our husband this nature? It is you. So Indra has also acted like this. It's because of Krishna's smile. So how do we, you know, say that Indra is wrong, you know, for not seeing the supremacy of the law? This is my reflection, Maharaj. Yes. Thank, thank you, Tibobanam. Certainly. 
certainly we have got the nature of Krishna that then we are we must act according to this nature. But when we go to the mode of passion or ignorance, then we become overwhelmed by it. And that happened really to Indra, that uh, he became overwhelmed by it. Of course, it can also to do a, have to do something with yoga maya to perform the pastime. But uh, uh, Krishna decided to give Indra a lesson that means that he needed it that too much false ego be becoming the controller. And then therefore he, he arranged for, for the whole pastime that he would become angry and so on. But, uh, yes. but one thing is that Indra understood the whole pastime was Krishna's mercy. It was Krishna's mercy. But, uh, yes. But that similarity with the Kaliya pastime, you know, the Nagapatni is also a prayer. He is a serpent, what can he do? He is in the mode of ignorance. But Indra is different. He's supposed to be in the mode of goodness. He came down to the mode of passion and ignorance by his false evil. And that's not allowed for demigods, for the, for the, that they are supposed to be in the mode of goodness. So Krishna brought him back to the mode of goodness. Hi Krishna. Thank you, Tribhuna, for your comment. Thank you, Maharaj. Wonderful that, explanation. That, uh, good. Then, it's just a few... <laughs> Moment, huh? we have still two comments. Pavitra Prabhu, yes. Krishna Maharaj. Our business at the Lotus Feet Maharaj. Maharaj, in the incident of the Krishna um, taking the gopis dress. Yeah. That, yeah, he went with the gopas, with the coward boys. So he didn't go alone. Mm -hmm. Why this time Krishna decided to go in a secluded place so that um, Kalia would, um, Indra would repent so that the card boys would not know, other people would not know? Uh, two reasons. Now, Acharya says the first reason is he wanted to make it more easier for Indra to confess the situation. That uh, it's more easy to do that personally alone than before a whole, whole mass of people. That second thing is, he will reply to Indra that, uh, and he will take the role of the Supreme Personality of God it, and that he cannot do that in the presence of the other cowboy boys and residents. Therefore, we went to a solitary place. So that are two reasons that appear from the commentaries. That's, is that okay, Pavitra? Thank you, Maharaj. Excellent, Maharaj. Okay. Then, then we have, yes, what a call about Priya. Hare Krishna. I was just reflecting that um, we could either, we could see this pastime from two different angles mm -hmm. uh, that either Krishna arranged the lifting of Govardhan Hill in order to um, defeat the pride of Indra or that Krishna arranged that Indra become influenced by pride so that he could have the pastime of lifting Govardhan Hill it could both be simultaneously correct or is it one or the other or the, the second is not mentioned by our acharyas. And contrary to that is the point that, that Indra, a comment in previous chapters, Indra needed to get a lesson. Krishna decided to give him a lesson. So there is, it's not that Indra 
was without pride. And that that was a problem. That was certainly there. That, uh, of course, that, that not, does not mean that the other point is valid, invalid. It is not. Krishna may have influenced them, with, especially with the mode of passion to get it through the Lila Shakti, to get a pastime going on. But still, he needed a punishment. But, uh, so, uh, as a reason alone, it will not stand. Okay. But sometimes Krishna, does, like with Arjuna, you know, Arjuna is a pure devotee, but Krishna puts him in material consciousness. Yes, that uh, we see that with Arjun, that he had to play a role. He had to play the drama. But uh, there, there was nothing really wrong with the heart of Arjun. Krishna has orchestrated it. But with Indra, different case, but not the same case. Too. He had a problem with that. Because so how he, he was not a pure devotee. Mm -hmm. Was Sakam. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering how do we know, you know, with devotees, um, whether if a devotee acts in a way that is that we think is offensive or just kind of strange or something, <laughs> whether it's uh, you know Krishna's um, arrangement that they acted like that, or whether it's their own artists that are pushing them to act like that? Yeah, but of course, from outside, we think that they don't come, come from some exam more and so on. We think it's our fault. It's, it, it comes to give our reactions. I should not look, think this person is at fault. That, that, that's one, that's good for our spiritual life to think like that. It will make a spiritual advancement. That does not mean that, that the other side, there is no fault that uh, Krishna can use the fault of the other to give you your reaction. He does a different thing at the same time. And we cannot fathom what's really going on. We see on the, on the surface. Therefore, it is, it is, you say, how can we know the situation of the other. Uh, to be spiritual, spiritual is safe. Do not try to judge the other. It may ruin your spiritual life. And offense and so on. Better to see the fault in ourselves. And I know it's not easy. Mm. All time. But, uh, that, that's good exercises. Uh, by hearing these pastimes again and again, we know, we learn to repent and see the fault in ourselves. And feel oneself, oneself I'm a complete nonsense. And if that feeling is genuine, genuinely there, that's conducive for us with advancement. Does that help? Yeah, I was just, it was becoming a little clear to me that um, it seems to be the conclusion here that what's going on with Indra too is that Krishna uses the faults of others in order to um, do good. You know, he'll use yeah. one person's fault to do good to another. It's like he uses Indra's fault to give pleasure to the Vajvasis and display these wonderful pastimes. So another person may have a fault and then Krishna will... Um, Put us in contact with that person because uh, in order to purify ourselves yeah uh, he's also teaching us we are we are this indra and we have also this faults mm -hmm. and how to repent and so on he's teaching to us to his devotees that uh, Therefore, if I, I read all these commentaries. It was long, but it gives a clue to us what, what was going on and what Indra felt in his heart as an offender. 
and what we should feel in our heart. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Good. Then. Good. Have a. Hare Krishna. Please. Yes, yes, Maharaj, I'm sorry. Uh, there is an example that was given in text five, uh, referring to sadistic wounds. So what does it actually depict? Is it, does it depict Krishna or uh, Indra? No, in text five. Text five, purpose. 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 Let's go to that. Text 5, first verse. How then could there exist in you the symptoms of an ignorant person, such as greed, lust, and anger, and envy, which are produced by one's previous involvement in material existence, and which cause one to become further entangled in material existence? And yet, as a supreme note, you impose punishment to protect religious principles and curb down the, the wicked. So this is this complex philosophical statement. And see where we find that. In which paragraph is it? First to second. Anyway, I think it is second paragraph, Maharaj. Example is given. For example, in the presence of a sadistic yeah. woman. Second. Yeah, yeah I, I see that. I stated in the Gita, for example, in the presence of a seductive woman. A man may give, give in to his light, lower instincts and try to enjoy sex with her. So that's the point that we, we, he became angry and, and by that he associated with the mode of passion and ignorance. He associated with these modes. That, uh, and if we are not strong in our spiritual practice, Maybe may give into it that, and that's that's our lower material nature. That, uh, but we should be strong enough not to do that. But of course, it's easy to say, Brahma also, Brahma, he uh, with his daughter back and so on, became a builder. It's always danger. In, in that sense, Indra, because he's a controller, the mode of passion is always in danger. And, and that's pointed out here. Then. But finally, he decided to go with the mode of passion. He decided that uh, that's the point by his deciding to associate with the lower material of nature, but we should not decide that, that uh, even if sometimes we cannot control our senses, we should always come to the point, I don't want it. That's an important point. Does that help, Prabhupada? I'm grateful, Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, prima, Maybe the last comment. Dandava Pranas Maharaj, I'm sorry that this thing is happening to me again and again. I come and network and some things, some noise. Anyway, uh, my point is from test one and two. That first of all, when we commit offenses and we are chastised, it is only for two minutes that those who are unfortunate become more and more angry 
and they commit more offenses on top of that. So all buildings to hinder. Then secondly, offenses create uh, uncertainty about the future. When we commit offenses, we, we become uncertain about our position, fear constant. Then um, again, we saw that when Indra committed this offense, in order to apologize, he went to Lord Brahma. He didn't go directly. And afterwards, he went to Suraru. So when we commit offenses, what I learned there is that if we want to apologize, we need to go to someone, somebody who is superior to us and who is also close to such a person who is in a better relationship so that we pass through such a person, go with him, then we render apology and it will be more effective. So that's another thing I learned from, um, from uh, Indra's approach. Then coming to test two. Coming to text two, I'm saying that uh, Indra offended Krishna openly, but he's going to uh, apologize secretly. You see? Yeah. If, if, if it is human beings like me, I will not accept it because I will say, why? You offended me openly in the presence of everyone. You should apologize openly also. But Krishna just accepted the apology in private, he didn't want to humiliate him further, and therefore encouraging him to apologize. That, that means he appreciated the move to apologize at all in the first place. So I am learning from this that maybe I need to need not to overreact. When somebody offends me and the person make any effort to apologize, I should just accept it without making it more complicated. So Krishna's Mercy, interest, humility, education. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was very nice comment. That yes, when we are have offended someone, we can go to higher authorities and ask how to deal with it and ask forgiveness. Uh, the second point you made, Lord Krishna knew it's, it would be very different, difficult for Indra because of his still this is false ego to apologize before everyone. So he allowed him to apologize privately. That's an interesting point. Some reciprocation would be the book. Thank you very much. So we are at the end of the session today. Monday we will hear the reply from Krishna. And we will hear about from Surabi. So we will finish Monday this chapter. And Tuesday we will finish, we will go to chapter 28. Wednesday there will be no class, but there will be a seminar by Mother Prabhupada Priya at 3 p.m. IST on Wednesday. That uh, those who want to send me uh, outlines, so please consider, as we discussed in the beginning, you sent me an outline. I need four things. A title, your aims, your aim of your seminar. Your aim of your seminar means that um, what do I want to achieve in the seminar? And then the objectives, how am I, how am I going to achieve that in different steps? That, uh, and then an outline of 20, 25 lines maximum, what you are going to speak of. It can be bullet points of the way you want to do it. So then I, can, I have an idea what you are going to speak about it and give my approval with some comments. If I can give suggestions. Thank you. Gosh, can I ask you a question yes. about that? 
Um, should we have uh, objectives for each session or just overall objectives for the whole seminar? What's the most practical? What's the most practical? You, you can divide your, your sessions and build it around certain objectives, but you can also do it in, in another way and see it as, as, as an over, overall objectives, which, which are divided over and over. You can have different ob objectives in one session and others in other session. It's, it's what's practical. But, but the, what's the purpose of all this? We, we, to, un, to understand when we, give a, we, when we give a seminar, we want to achieve something with it, to give Krishna consciousness to others and give them certain realizations. So it, it must be clear from your seminar what the purpose is. Because, because I will see, I will look at your aim and your objectives and in your presentation I will look at how is that aim achieved through these object objectives so that's important by that we become effect efficient preachers and that yeah that's the purpose of it is that okay yes thank you thank you good we see each other on Monday Sai Prabhupada. Thank you, Maharaj. 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 Thank you,